Hello, everyone. My name is Anne, and I'm one of the genetic specialists here at Connors Clinic. And in today's video, we are going to be talking about glutathione. So glutathione uh, can be found in virtually every cell of the human body. It is part of our intracellular detoxification uh, intracellular detoxification process. So glutathione is very, very important for, um, for life and sustaining life. It's comprised of these three components, um, glutamate, cysteine, and glycine. And glutathione is considered a, a master antioxidant. So there are our free radicals within our body. We produce free radicals as a part of normal cellular metabolic functioning. And then sometimes there's external things, you know, like exposure to cigarette smoke or um, x-rays or something externally that can cause free radical production within the body. So we have systems in place to help neutralize those free radicals. So they are taken care of and they're not causing damage to healthy tissue. So glutathione is a master antioxidant because it, um, it can neutralize free radicals at a exponentially higher rate than just, you know, consuming foods that are high in antioxidants. So that is still wonderful. Obviously we wanna consume foods that are high in antioxidants, but an antioxidant really neutralizes a free radical at a one-to-one -one ratio and glutathione can neutralize free radicals at a much higher, exponentially higher ratio. So again, glutathione is very important. And here's a little um, image to just show. So here's an antioxidant. This is an angry free radical. It's unstable. Um, these electrons are not paired. And when they're not paired, uh, the search is on to steal um, an electron from something so this free radical can become stabilized. So we don't want the free radicals to be stealing electrons from our healthy cells because this causes damage to healthy cells. So antioxidants, they donate that electron to neutralize that free radical. So that's what we want to be happening in this process. And glutathione um, is, is an enzyme that does that within our body and it recycles itself. So it's kind of on this continuous feed. We can recycle glutathione so it can just continually donate that um, antioxidant component to neutralize the free radical. And it can also donate to other antioxidants like vitamin E and vitamin C can donate um, electrons to those so they can perform their function as antioxidants as well. And then it's also very important for detoxification. So in phase one, glutathione is used as a cofactor to kind of break down in this initial phase of taking toxins, breaking them down so they can become, um, you know, excreted through throughout the body. We want those toxins to go through all these phases of detox so we can get them out of the body. So phase one consists of kind of breaking things down getting them into more basic metabolite components so that they can enter phase two. So glutathione is an important cofactor in phase one. So it supports the um, CYP genes that are important. Um, cytochrome P450 um, is an important uh, gene family for phase one. And then also the PON1 gene family is important as well. So glutathione supports phase one as a cofactor. And then in phase two, there is a specific gene, GST, the glutathione S transferase gene that is uh, it within the, found within the liver, mainly within the liver. Um, this is the gene that actually attaches glutathione to those metabolites that were produced from phase one. So it takes those metabolites from phase one, attaches a glutathione molecule to those metabolites, and that essentially neutralizes them and you know gets them through phase two. So then they can go on to that next phase where they are prepared for escort out of the body. And then these are some of the genes that we look at in your genetic report. So um, the ways that we produce glutathione. 
So again, the glutathione is made up of these three uh, components, the glutamate, the cysteine, and the glycine. So these are some genes that we're looking at to see if all if the body is able to create these components to make the glutathione. So we have uh, the Schmidt gene that's important in glycine production. We have the CTH gene that's important in cysteine production. And then we have genes over here that are helping create you know, glutamate and getting everything, all of these components. So glutathione can be produced within the body. And then down here, we show this GSR gene. So this is a gene that helps us to recycle that glutathione. So any variants that you have in any of these different genes, we're looking at to determine if we need to do anything specific to support glutathione production, or do we need to support glutathione recycling? Because um, you know, if, if production is great, but recycling is not good, then we really need to focus on recycling. Um, do we need to give you some of these precursors? So we're taking a look at all of this in your genetic report and then making some recommendations. And there are definitely things that, um, you know, can inhibit glutathione production. So glutathione is depleted by, by toxins. So working to eliminate toxins from, um, you know, your environment, from the foods that you are, are eating, from the products that you're using on your body and within your home, um, with that, you know, in your yard. So we need to be working to reduce our toxic burden. This is spares glutathione, um, you know, from all of that effort that needs to be put into detoxing things. So we're sparing glutathione by limiting toxins. Medications can inhibit glutathione. So Tylenol it literally renders glutathione production, you know, paralyzes it. So uh, Tylenol is not a good medication, you know, you know, maybe short term, you know, if necessary, but certainly not something that we want to be giving our children after um, vaccinations. They need to be detoxing vaccinations. And so Tylenol is not good because of, because it, it, like I said, it paralyzes glutathione production. So we need to be careful with medications. Alcohol can reduce glutathione, stress, infections, just aging, um, and then also trauma. So all of these things we need to be mindful of and work to help eliminate these things from our body and from our environment, from our lives, so that we have adequate glutathione uh, production. And then these are some supplements or things that you can do to help um, if you need to, whether it's short term, maybe you've had a specific toxin exposure and you want to, you know, really just amp up glutathione for short term because of this toxic exposure, um, you know, you can do some of these things. You can take a liposomal glutathione. That's the best form is a liposomal Um N-acetylcysteine is a precursor. We talked um, just a moment ago about some of the precursor precursors that are required to produce glutathione, and N-acetylcysteine is one of those. Coffee enemas are a great way to help support detoxification and directly support the GST gene, that glutathione S transferase gene. So stimulates that gene, so it is. Um, better able to attach that glutathione molecule to those uh, toxic metabolites from phase one. So it really helps with detoxing. Um, and then this is something pro NADHNR. This supports glutathione recycling. So again, when we're looking at your genetic report and, and um, you know, making recommendations, we're looking at all of the glutathione genes, the glutathione uh, production pathways. We're looking at recycling. Um, another thing to keep in mind is that uh, NRF2 and KEEP1, which are other genes that we also are looking at, but glutathione is partly dependent on uh, the function of NRF2 and KEEP1. So when NRF2 and KEEP1, they're kind of the moderating system within our cells, and if they sense any stress or something wrong, then they uh, KEEP1 and NRF2, they kind of separate Keep one has a hold on NRF2, and then when it senses stress, they separate, which allows NRF2 to actually enter into the nucleus of the cell, attach to parts of DNA, 
that will stimulate for production of these um, antioxidant and antioxidant enzymes like glutathione, like um, superoxide dismutase, like catalase. So these things are important that are important for survival. Um, so we, again, are looking at all of this within your genetic report. So hopefully this little video helps you understand the importance of glutathione, um, things that we can do to minimize, um, you know, inhibition of gluth glutathione, things that we can do to support it. And then, um, you know, takes a look at some of those genes. So thank you for listening and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.